Howdy Space Rangers, Captain Phoenix here. Today we are looking at the Kenobi trailer. I'm not gonna be reacting to it. This is solely going to be a breakdown. Yep, that's right. We're breaking down the Kenobi trailer. We're gonna break it down scene by scene, set by set, everything. So yeah, let's get into it. Before I do get into it, I'm gonna make a small announcement-ish. I don't think I'm gonna be doing any more reaction videos, or at least going into the future, I don't think I'll be doing any more. Uh, for the sole reason that they kind of suck. All right, every time I do a reaction video, I don't get any views on it. No views means no happy for me. So yeah, I figure because people aren't interested in my reactions or like I just don't get enough views or market them properly, uh, stepping away from reactions in the future. However, I think I might be training them in for breakdowns, but we'll see how well that goes out. This is the first of them, so yeah, we're gonna break down the Kenobi trailer scene by scene. It's gonna be a longer video, so for those people who came to see my reaction or who, those people who thought it was gonna be a short video, leave now. J just leave, just leave. I promise you, you're gonna be bored by my voice. All right, now that I've ensured that only my view is still here, let's begin. So we first start on Tatooine, and I just wanted to like mention this real quick. But obviously, this show is gonna take uh, a lot of this show is gonna take place on Tatooine, and I know that people are gonna get annoyed by this because lately, Star Wars fans have actually been sick of Tatooine, or they're sick of of their shows and movies taking place on Tatooine. I, for one, don't really hate it. I I, I feel no hatred towards Tatooine. Uh, mostly just because I think it's a cool planet, and I think with the right writing or like with good writing, you could make something of it. You could tell a good story. I feel like there's some hidden potential there. But so far we haven't gotten that. It was fine in The Mandalorian. We only got like a couple episodes on Tatooine. I do understand in Boba Fett, like the whole plot was on Tatooine. And I understand those people who are like, ugh, why the hell of all plots for Boba Fett did it have to be on Tatooine? Dude's a bounty hunter. We should have seen him like going from planet to planet. Like why does the story have to be, or, like why does the whole plot have to set around Tatooine? Which I kind of agree that was a bit weird. But for Kenobi, like we have to give the exception here. There is no way in hell this could take place on any other planet. Not only do the movies bring in here, but like even the circumstances just surrounding like the show they have to take place on Tatooine so Star Wars fans bear with them on this one I'm pretty sure we won't have to see Tatooine again for a while after this <laughs> the fight is done we lost so okay we see Obi-Wan, who is once again played by the spectacular Ewan McGregor. I am so happy to go him back. And he has, and he looks like he hasn't even aged a day. Like, he's slightly aged, but like, you'd think you'd, it's only been like a couple months since you've seen him. So yeah, we see Obi-Wan walking around on Tatooine with his EOP. Uh, and another thing I wanted to mention is I'll also be making comparisons to the Kenobi book, which might or might not be canon, but there is a Kenobi book that uh, that Disney did publish themselves, so it might be canon. And it was about Obi-Wan's adventures on, ta on Tatooine. This this uh, series does not seem to be adapting the book, nor does it be se seeming to tell like the same adventure or the same story. Though I do think they're gonna borrow elements from the book and place them uh, on the TV screen. So I am kind of excited to see what they're gonna pull from the book, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't think they're gonna bring in that family from the restaurant, though I do think we could have like a speeder chase over the Sarlacc pit, or uh, maybe something to do with his EOP, because in the book he did treat that EOP so, uh, like his pet. Uh, the EOP is a camel thing by the way for those non Star Wars fans. And then obviously we see him brooding here. He just mentioned the war is law, the, the war is over, we lost. This is in referring to the Clone Wars and Order 66, how all the Jedi were wiped out. And Obi-Wan's essentially the last of his kind, kind of, uh, you know, basic stuff. And there we get to see little Luke. So, uh, I was gonna say that this probably takes place, what, around 10 years after... Revenge of the Sith based on Luke's age. However, this is the one time where I'm genuinely confused where in the timeline this show takes place. Because with every other Star Wars show, I already know how many years they take after a movie or before a movie, where they are in the timeline. With this show, I don't think we've been given a specific year or date as to when this show takes place. So it makes me very uh, confused and annoyed at myself for not doing a bunch of research. But if I were to guess, I would assume this takes place probably more or less 10 years uh after Revenge of the Sith because just looking at the timeline it would make sense because we have the Bad Batch which takes, which takes place like weeks or months after Revenge of the Sith so it can't happen then uh, then we have um, 
Jedi Fallen Order, which takes place like five years after Revenge of the Sith, which by the way is important, so keep that at the back of your mind, Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, then we had Solo, which takes place like 10 years after Revenge of the Sith, and then Rebels, which takes place like 14 years after. So if I were to guess, I would say this probably takes place just sometime before Solo, when Luke would still be like 10, because Solo's like 10 years older than Luke, so Han Solo would be like 19 going on his adventure, while Luke would be like 9, 10 around there. So that's my best guess as to when this uh, whole series like would take place. Uh, again, not 100% sure. And due to one of the sisters being in this, I don't, I don't know. But again, I'm not bringing in my theories for this show right now. This is just a breakdown for the whole trailer. I'll bring in my theories for the show and what I think the story will be in my next video. So look out for that. But for now, we're just going to break down the trailer. But I, I just wanted to say, hey, look, it's a little Luke. That's basically what I wanted to say. Stay hidden. And of course, we have this. I am surprised they brought this in. Not only did they bring back Duel of the Fates, but like the acapella slash choir version. Oh, that's cool. The key to hunting Jedi is patience. So what I really love, let's back it up here before we, we move on. So this place is the Inquisitor hideout. I think it was called Fortress Inquisitorius. This is where all the Inquisitors are trained by Vader himself. And you might remember that this is also the area or at least the location of the final level in Jedi Fallen Order. See, I told you it would be important. So yeah, in Jedi Fallen Order, in the last level where you go against the second sister in Vader, this is where you have to go because uh, uh, the second sister stole like a Jedi holocron. So you have to fight like her and Vader in this place. And this is again where the uh, Inquisitors are trained. And I am so glad they finally like brought it into the actual canon like it's not just in the game now it's like fully in the canon of Star Wars so I really like that so yeah this is where well, uh, Inquisitors are trained and it was from Jedi Fallen Order I'm so glad and you know what I actually recognize this on my own like I didn't need like a, a YouTuber or, or an easter egg finder to break it down for me immediately I started I'm like oh I know what this is this patience and of course there he is nah 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 don't you do this to me trailer <laughs> So there we go, the Grand Inquisitor. It is confirmed that this is the one and only Grand Inquisitor. What I really find a bit weird before I like talk about how excited I am is the weird casting. I don't know about you, but I just find the, the casting for the Inquisitor kind of weird. Not bad, it's just that he doesn't look the part. He sounds fine, he just doesn't look the part. The Inquisitor, at least the one from Rebels, had a more ovalish, like straighter face, not round like this guy, and he had more like lines on his head. Or the lines were more visible here it's just those marks the lines on his head are barely visible so uh like going ac uh, along his head they're barely visible so i just find it to be very weird casting like i again it's just me however i do think find his voice fine and i am excited that the grand inquisitor is is, is in this however if uh, i already do know he's not gonna die in this kenobi isn't gonna be the one who kills him because we already know what happens to him in rebels though i am excited for him to be here and again i will mention this in my theory video uh the next one but i do think he could play a really key role in this show because for those who don't know the Grand Inquisitor used to be one of the Jedi Temple Guards so the fact that this guy used to be a former Jedi now a Jedi Hunter we could get some nice uh, thematic like theme <laughs> thematic themes going on with him uh, seeing how he made that transition and how he broke under the weight of the dark side but Kenobi no matter how much the galaxy was against him he didn't break and maybe we could have that like that difference between them that gap between them about what it takes to be a true Jedi because later on the Grand Inquisitor does talk about what it is to be a Jedi and and he sort of like speaks about it in, with such hatred but Kenobi always stands by his values and he never fell he didn't become the Inquisitor so I feel like we get some, we could get some real drama from these two obviously as mentioned the Grand Inquisitor wouldn't die but I do feel like if he's around for a lot of the show we could get some good drama from this we could get to see why he fell we could get to see what made him become you know fall to the darkness and we could see how Kenobi becomes stronger than that, that that's just my opinion though <laughs> Jedi cannot help what they are. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Clash. Back up, back up, back up. So here it's like nothing normal. I mean, here it's just normal Kenobi on a transport headed to Mos Eisley, I think. Jedi so, yeah. cannot help what they are. 
here this place so this is the same place fortress in Christoria. so for those who don't know the fortress isn't just a thing like on the ocean it extends underwater like the fortress actually attaches to like the seabed and then it rises out of the ground so this meeting room is part of the same fortress and i really love the fact that we still get to see it's underwater aesthetic ah oh, i'm so excited they actually brought this from the game man i'm so happy their compassion so uh, a lot of people were saying that that guy who was like being hanged in Medea, like he looked like he was dying. There, a lot of them like to say that he was hanged by the Empire. Personally, I don't think so. What I think is that he was force choked in Medea by this sister. So this is also an Inquisitor sister. She, we have not seen her before. Like she's a new one. So I was about to say that she's probably the second sister from Jedi Fallen Order. However, the second sister from Jedi Fallen Order is definitely not the same skin color, and she's like just complete. She has a completely different story. So honestly, this might take place well after Fallen Order. So, if I were to assume when in the timeline Kenobi takes place, I would very much say it takes place after Fallen Order, but before Solo. That's my best guess. So, Luke would be around the age of like 5 to 10 in this, in, in this like time period. Uh, so, he's definitely not old enough to do Jedi training, or at least if this were the Republic era, he would have been way too old to do Jedi training. But anyway, back to what I was saying. So, a lot of people like to say that he was hanged by the Empire, you know, rope and all. However, I don't think that's the case. I think this uh, Inquisitor sister forced choked him in, in mid-air to make the crowd around them afraid and there we have uncle ben i mean uncle owen jesus oh it's uncle ben yeah because uncle ben raised luke skywalker how crazy would that be with great power comes great responsibility <laughs> then he gets taken freaking out by the empire no nah, no nah, nah. this is uncle owen uh the guy who raised uh luke from what i heard in like the legends uncle owen was actually kind of a bad eh? like this dude would actually fight he knows how to fight so uh in my theory video i will also mention how i think he and Obi-Wan could team up essentially to protect Luke or just to ward the Empire away from going to the Lars homestead, but I don't know. So yeah, anyway, I do like the fact that Uncle Owen is here. We'll probably get to see more of him throughout the series, but uh, I don't think he'll take too much screen time. It's a trail. So with that city over there, the one with the neon lights, uh, we do get to see it in a later shot, but that isn't Tatooine. This is some other planet. So I'd assume this is another planet where the Inquisitors are looking for a Jedi and they got a hit on him and they kill him. And this is just to demonstrate how powerful they are. Uh, I'll talk about this more when they when they show it again. Oh, and here's their ship. I really love this ship. It looks so sick. Even like when we got to see the overhead shot of it when it went to uh, Fortress Inquisitors, it looks sick. It looks, oh, it almost looks like Vader's shuttle, which makes sense because like all the Inquisitors are supposed to be like based off vader they're not supposed to be like vader ripoffs but it's supposed to be like a little cult of vader so the fact that all the inquisitors have to look like vader to play the part it makes sense so like their masks their suits and of course their ships all have to sort of mirror vaders in one way or another and i really love that it really just shows uh not only vader's power but just the empire stretch throughout the galaxy that they will stop at nothing to to you know sh uh, show their might Jedi code is like an itch. Of course, there's an Imperial commander. We see a lot of those all the time. What I find interesting about them is like in the animated it shows their eyes always covered by their hats, but in live action, they have no choice but to show their eyes. And I don't know why, but they just look less intimidating that way. Leaves a trail. Jedi code is like an itch. What I will also say, so like her eyes are covered by the shadow, but like we, we can still see and we know she's a regular person. Like we, we like and that's the thing, because like in the shows, whenever you see a commander like this, you'd assume they're like a brilliant tactician. Like they are always one step ahead of the rebels when it comes to like finding battle plans. But here she's like a normal person. Kenobi can take her. Uh but what I will say is that this scene or at the very least this shot heavily heavily reminds me of a of a fan movie uh, a couple of star wars fans made uh, there was like a, a, a star wars fan film that a couple guys made a couple years back it was also called kenobi and uh this reminds me a lot of that where like these guys went to the lars homestead to like take luke and kenobi started fighting back and uh, i don't know you guys should go check it out I, I don't know if i can remember what it was called or like if i can find the link but if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about so this shot like reminds me a lot of that and it just showed that disney is trying to pay respects to as many things as possible they're like paying respects to the comics to the book and even to like fan stuff and i really like that this show really is going all out even looks like it has a bigger budget than the mandalorian and book of boba fett which again i absolutely love so yes that was this is the neon city help it where is he 
Right, so this is where we get like a wider shot of the Neon City. So if you saw the a, a few clips behind, we saw like uh, even that other sister in the Quisitor sister, she was like jumping roof to roof. So again, my theory is, like my, my little mini theory is, is uh, but hey, what was this planet called? I think it was called Dio or something. I can't remember, but it's a new planet we're going to be introduced to. And it looked, and, it, and it's supposed to have like an Asian town feeling to it, sort of like Tokyo or Hong Kong or something like that. So uh, what I really love is, oh, not my, what I love, but my theory, <laughs> I'm getting my words confused. I, I'm bad at English. But my theory is, is that the Inquisitors will come here first. This is the first time we'll get introduced to the Inquisitors and we'll get to see what they're about. I mean, obviously we know if what they are. If you if you watch Rebels, you know what the Inquisitors are. But if this is the first time you're going to see them, I think they will do, what they will do is, if this uh, to introduce the Inquisitors into this show and to a newer audience, what will happen is that the Inquisitors are going to be sent to this planet. And they're probably on a hunt for a Jedi. They probably got a hit on a Jedi from like one of their spies or like a bounty hunter told them or something like that. So the Inquisitors are gonna come to this planet looking for a Jedi. They're gonna find the Jedi and they're probably gonna hunt this Jedi down. And during the whole scene, we're gonna see how they use the stormtroopers to their aid. And then probably when they corner the Jedi, we're gonna have like a fight with the Jedi. The sister and the fifth brother. I don't know if the Grand Inquisitor will be there, but if he is, we'll we'll see. So yeah, these guys are gonna corner the Jedi. We're gonna have a sick lightsaber battle, and then they're gonna kill the Jedi because that's what they what they're supposed to do. They're Jedi hunters. So this Jedi they're finding will die. Uh, I don't think the Inquisitor, any of the Inquisitors will die because again they're there for the rest of the series and this scene or at least this whole part is to show how powerful they are if it is an actual plot point in the show i will be very wrong it, they could be chasing after kenobi anyway because there is a scene where like there's like a bunch of escape pods flying into orbit so kenobi could be one of those pods heading to like this planet so they could be chasing after him however my personal theory and i think this is a pretty good one is that they're here looking for a jedi and they've come to hunt the jedi we got sick lightsaber battle and they kill the jedi this is to show how powerful this is to show how powerful they are and how scary and like what a big threat they are. This is to show like the the, the, big, the kind of threat these guys will be for the rest of the series. So I think they're going to set the precedent by looking for this Jedi on this planet. We might get an episode de uh, dedicated to it or just half an episode, but anything to show how sick these Inquisitors are. Also, I want to show you another scene uh, here, I think. He cannot help it. Right, this scene where the Inquisitor is threatening a bunch of civilians to like give up Kenobi or he's doing like these crazy acts to make to like force Kenobi to reveal himself. He's like, stop, stop, don't kill these people. I'm the Jedi. This scene reminds me a lot of Jedi Fallen Order where the exact same thing happened. Where like the second sister and the ninth sister uh, came to Braca and they like got all the workers lined up and they're like, we're gonna kill all these workers if you don't reveal the Jedi. And then we had Cal's Fred who like sacrifices himself for Cal so Cal can escape. But of course, Cal was being dumb. He reveals himself in the crowd and then he fights the sisters and then he has to escape when Seer comes to rescue him. So they're doing the same tactic here. They're threatening a bunch of people saying a Jedi must be honorable and sacrifice himself for other people. So he's, so like this, of he comes with his lightsaber and he's like, where is he? It reminds me a lot of, of uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Love that callback. I love it so much. Another thing I do love is that when the when the uh, Grand Inquisitor showed his double lightsaber, that's when Duel of the Fates started playing. Because again, Kenobi's greatest enemy wielded a double lightsaber. So just mm, again, the, the the attention to detail is amazing. Also, I love the fact that we've got at least three Inquisitors so far. We've got the Grand Inquisitor, the fifth brother, and this new sister, who I don't know who she is. I don't know if she's like an eighth sister or something like that. I have no idea, but she's definitely a new Inquisitor. And again, my theory is she's gonna be the one who has to die in this series because she's not in the future movies or shows so that's my guess there are the escape pods i told you about where like i assumed kenobi was probably gonna be in them as he uh, flies into space probably he would go to that uh asian uh based planet but i highly doubt it I, I don't think it's kenobi in any of those pods uh then here a lot of people were assuming this was uh uncle owen uncle owen was like trying to run away from the inquisitors probably get back to his home to take care of luke i highly doubt it because i know it's a bit blurry right now but there is a tattoo on this guy's arm uncle owen isn't known for having tattoos on him so it probably isn't him this is probably just some random civilian who thought the inquisitors were coming to like arrest him or something and so he tried to run away and then the inquisitors find him they either interrogate him or torture him or i don't know they'll display their power to this guy or on this guy one way or another <laughs> 
here we get the Jedi symbol. So these are probably the Inquisitors. They've come to like uh, uh, Obi Wan's home, and they found it. They, they that he scribbled like the Jedi uh, insignia or Jedi logo on his wall, and they're like, "Ah, oh, the Jedi is here. Let's go find him." Either that, or this is just Obi Wan touching the the symbol to remind himself of where he, of where he came from, and that he should not uh, fall to the darkness. <laughs> So here we get like a, a sick scene of Obi-Wan sort of like fighting the, the Inquisitors or like fighting uh, Imperial Stormtroopers on the rooftops. So here we can definitely see him using a, a blaster instead of a lightsaber. So we know that Obi-Wan is going above and beyond to not reveal himself as a Jedi, going so far as to use a blaster and try and avoid... Uh, you know, again, being uh, having his identity revealed. I do like this, sort of. Uh, I will explain about why I like it in my theory video. Not that he's really in a blaster, but more that he's going to great lengths to protect his identity and that he must not show he's a Jedi in any way, shape, or form. And again, I'll talk a about this a lot more in my theory, but the the blaster thing, we'll, we'll get there. So, yeah, he's uh, fighting these guys. I do think it's Obi-Wan. A lot of people are saying it's probably not Obi-Wan, probably the other Jedi they're hunting on, on, the, on the tech planet, the uh, Asian based city planet however i i think it's obi-wan I, I definitely think in this case they are fighting obi-wan on the rooftops And here we have Obi-Wan, final shot of the trailer. What I really find so interesting, or what I just really like about this trailer, is that not once, not once does Obi-Wan ignite his lightsaber. Go ahead and watch the trailer. I've been here this whole time. He doesn't ignite, ignite his lightsaber under any circumstances. Yet, we still love this trailer. We've lost our minds. We've gone insane. This trailer got 6 million views in 12 hours. Name another trailer that did the same thing. And yeah, so like the fact that he doesn't even show his lightsaber, we just see like images of his face, knowing that Ewan McGregor is playing him that has already got like the whole fan base excited and six million people are already ready to like jump on this train it's amazing And there you hear Vader's breathing. Now, they have confirmed Vader is coming back for this show. And he's going to be played by none other than Hayden Christensen. So yes, Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor are once again acting together. And they're reprising their roles. And I am so hyped for this show. Why isn't it out yet? <laughs> And as you can see, it says limited series coming May 25th. So it's coming at the end of May. Everyone mark your calendars. And it's also a limited series, meaning it's only going to be a one season show. As much as I wish we could get more like a season two, maybe, I am fine with it being one season long. That's assuming the story is good. It's well paced, well written, and can fit in one season. However, I did hear that the episode count may not be promising because originally the show is going to be like, what, eight episodes? And then I think they cut it down to like six and then they wanted to cut it down to like four again. So I really hope the episode count is somewhat long. Being a limited series, I don't see it more. Be, sorry, it being a limited series, I don't see I don't see it being more than ten episodes long. But I do hope that ten episodes is at least what we get, or something like that. Eight, I would, I'd even be fine with eight. But six or four, that is way too little, especially for a show like this. It's supposed to be like this huge movie. And yeah, there we go. That's my breakdown of the entire trailer. So, yeah, there we go. All the Easter eggs and little things I could find and little story beats I think the show could have. I will be releasing a theory sort of summarizing what I think could be in this show or at least what I want to be, what I want there to be in this show. So I expect that to come out like sort of later in the day, uh, probably an hour or two after this video comes up, comes out. But uh, yeah, I am really excited for this show. I have been waiting for this show for years and I've been following as, as many details as I, as I possibly could. I still need to know which sister that is the the black chick playing her because i don't think it's a second sister but if it is i am gonna embarrass myself so hard but yeah uh excited for everything as mentioned before i did notice one or two things are a bit odd like uh like the inquisitor not being uh well cast and uh, i am interested as to how they're gonna bring vader back because if we do get a vader obi-wan rematch that would be definitely odd it'll be very odd and i don't know if i want that i don't know if i want that because i know it will undermine the uh ending of Revenge of the Sith because like Revenge of the Sith's ending was like so impactful and just so meaningful to the whole of Star Wars like I'm even like not like even putting like my nostalgia aside 
this is one of the most important battles in Star Wars. So the fact that Obi-Wan and Anakin have another rematch before A New Hope, I don't know if I like that. Uh, that's something I don't know if I fully side with. And I don't know if I like it when the show does make it. If the show does do it well, I'll be like, it's possible. But I still won't like it. I do like the fact that, I what like, in my head, the real thing should be that Obi-Wan fights Anakin and Mustafa. And they don't meet each other until A New Hope where Anakin kills Obi-Wan. Because if the two do meet again and they have another rematch, we have to have Obi-Wan Obi -Wan beat Vader. There is no other way this, this battle could end. Obi-Wan has to beat Vader in order... Order for him to like go back to Tatooine and take care of Luke and how do you have Obi-Wan go back to Tatooine if Vader could possibly track him so that's what I'm saying uh, when the whole I know we're gonna have them meet up at some point it's inevitable but I do hope that when they do it it's at least done with respect and again the writing is smart enough it's sharp and smart enough to keep these two separate or if they're gonna fight have the fight be respectable but keep them separate and then have Obi-Wan return to Tatooine without it breaking canon because again I do wish, or at least I do hope, they keep the integrity of episode 3 and 4. Anakin fights Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan wins, they don't meet each other for like 20 years, Obi-Wan comes back, he fights Anakin, Anakin beats him, but because Obi-Wan chooses to do so. And it also ties in with that line, like, uh, uh, you have become like the nightmare of your dreams or whatever obi-wan told anakin uh when they when they met on the death star so again i just hope they keep that integrity from the movies and if they do have the meat they have to be respectable they don't pull a palpatine ghost on us like somehow palpatine return and they have obi-wan somehow fight anakin and anakin then follow him to tatooine the writing has to be smart and it has to be tight because this is something very fragile they're working with if they were adapting the obi-wan story from the book like the the kenobi book i would have given them a bit more leeway because obi-wan didn't even find out anakin was alive until like the very end of the book but as of now it would be a bit weird i also want to see how obi-wan trains on his own because he is training to learn how to become a force ghost uh from qui-gon so i want to see him learn how to talk to qui-gon how to become a force ghost and to do all that crazy stuff we already know he's he, we already know he's watching over little luke so i like to see him like work on himself and the character development he goes through i want to know what his character arc is gonna be in this show i already mentioned one of the themes that could be there with obi-wan discussing with the grand inquisitor what it takes to be a jedi the grand inquisitor to have been a fallen Jedi and Obi-Wan still trudging on and whether or not he should keep going. That seems like a good character act for him and I feel like it could fit the themes very well. However, this is Disney and if it's not Clone Wars, they don't do it spectacularly. Like seriously, name one amazing show other than Clone Wars Disney did and don't bring in the Mandalorian, that's cheating. <laughs> Alright then. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today guys. I've broken down as much as I can from this trailer. Um, if I missed anything, let me know. And now my big theory video is coming out. This is a theory as to where I think the show is going to go and what I think it's going to do with, with, its, with itself in terms of like the characters and the story and the setting and how they might get around it. It's basically one big prediction video. Hopefully I am not wrong and hopefully I don't fail and fall on my face. Anyway guys, thank you so very much for watching. Be sure to like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, if, if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. Enjoy other videos on my channel. Share with your friends and family. And with that, I have been I've been Captain Phoenix, and I will see you in another universe. Goodbye, my rangers.